Okay, so we are graphing that equation that I have on the board or they have on the, that page. And I'm going to hit menu. Oh, wait, before I do this, I don't want to make the same mistake I made before. Hit escape. I'm going to go to a document so I can save it. Are you with me? Yes, yes, yes. Do you want to save? This is where you have to yell at me. Mm. Okay, you guys see it now? So I'm on a document. Make sure you're in a new document. You don't want to be on Scratchpad. I am going to add a graph. I am hitting menu because this is a polar function. So I'm going to graph in polar, yes? Yes, Mrs. Ward. So I am actually 15... What is that over there? No, no, no. And then I am going to use the same window that they use. See the window that they use? And everyone knows theta is with the pipe button. So I'm using the same window that they use. You're going to have, you're going to have to pick, pick your own windows. When you do this, you're going to make sure that you have the same window across all three graphs because you're going to graph this three ways. You're going to graph it polar, which we're doing right now. Then you're going to graph it as a relation, and then you're going to graph it as a parametric. You're doing all three ways that we learned in this section. Isn't that great? Fun? So I have that graph, yes? And when I'm doing the other ones, I'm going to want to write it myself a note. See how it changed my window? I don't like it when it does that. You're going to write yourself a note as to what your window is so that you don't have to keep on looking back. It makes your life easier. Okay, so now I have that window. We're all good, yes? So that's the first part, and then it asks you what shape is it, and you're going to tell me that it is a, an ellipse, right? It kind of looks like a circle on my screen, but it's not. It's an ellipse. So now the second part says find the rectangular equation. So I'm going to go back to this equation here, and I'm going to turn it into rectangular. So in order to turn it into rectangular, what do you think you're going to do to make this a rectangular equation? i give you a hint on there. What? I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator to get the denominator out of there. So I'm going to multiply by 3 minus 2 sine theta. When I do that, I'll just be left with 15 over here, and I'll be left with distributing with r. I'm going to have 3r minus 2r sine theta. Now, remember, you're trying to go from polar to rectangular, so you're trying to eliminate the r and the theta. Is there anything that I can eliminate right now the way it's written? Yes. Oh, is it a cosine? Oh, it is. Is it cosine on your sheet? Hmm. Did I graph cosine or sine? Oh, thank you. All right, so I'm going to change the uh, arc to co x. Everyone good with that? And I'm probably going to do that first before I do anything else. So I'm going to have 3r minus 2x is equal to 15. Again, trying to get rid of that r. What should I do first? Before I do that, though, I am going to do that, but first, what should I do? Put the 2x on the other side so I don't, because if I square it the way it's written, I'm going to have a middle term, and I don't want that. So I'm going to have 3r is equal to 2x plus 15, and then she said to square it. Now, you can square it with the 3 there, or you can divide both sides by 3. It doesn't matter. I'm going to square it the way it is. Are you okay with that? Okay, so I'm squaring the way it is. Squared. Squared. So this will be 9r squared. What's this side going to be, Alexa?
225. So I get 225. Now, in order to, what am I going to replace this R squared with? Cool. X, so this is going to be X squared plus Y squared. So I'm going to distribute that 9 while I'm at it. So I'm going to have 9X squared plus 9Y squared. And can I bring the X's over at the same time? I'm going to take that as a yes. I feel like I'm going really, really fast. I am. Yeah, you can play me back later and slow me down. All right. What am I going to do at this point? Combine like terms so that I can... What? I'm going to have to complete the square, right? So I'm putting all my x's together. I took 9x squared, subtracted the 4x squared, put all my x's together. First thing I'm going to do is factor out this 5 from the x's. This is old news. We, we've done this days and days and days and days and days. When I complete the square, what do I get? Mark? So I'm adding 180 here, which means I'm going to add 180 here, which I believe is 405. Then what am I going to do? Moscow. Both sides by 405 because this is going to be some type of conic. So I'm going to divide both sides by 405. When I do that, I'm going to have x minus 6 squared over 81 plus y squared over 45 is equal to 1. Then the directions ask you to find the center. Because what shape is this? If it's written like this, even if I didn't just graph it a second ago, what shape would I know that is? I know it's an ellipse because it has that plus sign. If I ask you for the center of that ellipse, what are you going to tell me? 6, 0. It asks for the foci, I believe, right? So for the foci, I need to do that equation, which I'm sure you all remember. C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. Remember that? I'm going with yes. So C squared is equal to 81 minus 45. So C is equal to 6. Which coordinate am I going to add that to to find my foci? My X or my Y? My X because all the action's happening on the X. So my foci is going to be 12, 0 and 0, 0. It wants, did it want the vertices? Of eccentricity. Eccentricity, remember, is eccentricity is C over A. I just said my C was 6 and my A is 9, so that's going to be 2 thirds. Everyone good? I feel like I went really fast through that one. Then it says that I'm going to graph this on a separate page in the, the relations mode. So I'm going to my calculator. I'm adding another page. I'm going to graphs, and then I am going to hit menu and do graph entry edit and go to relations. And I'm going to type that in just the way I saw it. And I'm hoping I remember it. Someone will yell at me if I make a mistake. And if I'm having a good day, what should happen? What? You're on C. You're on the last part. I hit enter. It doesn't look the same because my window's messed up, so I have to make it the same window. And I think I say that like 16 times in those directions, so... Don't yell at me if you get that wrong. You would never yell at me, would you? Never. Now, if I 
go between these two pages, it looks exactly the same, yes? Now, Caden really wants to get to the next section. The next section says do parametrics, so I'm going to copy this. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm going to just copy it down the old school way. Mm. And I give you a hint on that first page that you're going to use the sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta formula to make it a parametric. So you're going to introduce that third variable of theta. Yes? So I, I'm a big believer in having my cosine go with my x. It doesn't really matter, but you can't change what I think. So I'm going to write this as cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. You with me? Now hyperbola, you've got to watch the video. The hyperbola is going to be slightly different because I'm going to have subtraction. I have to adjust for that. I can't use sine squared plus cosine squared. So I'm going to say cosine squared theta is equal to this x minus 6 squared over 81. And then I'm going to say sine squared theta is equal to y squared over 45. And then taking the square root. So square root, square root, square root. Because I always forget to take the square root of the denominator. And I get cosine theta is equal to x minus 6 over 9. What variable am I going to solve for now? X. 9 times the cosine of theta is equal to x minus 6. So I'm going to make this 6 plus 9 cosine theta is equal to x. Square root, square root, square root. So sine theta is equal to y. Square root of 45, thinking of 9 times 5, so 3 times the square root of 5. Uh, 3 times the square root of 5 times the sine of theta is equal to y. Yes? So I have x is equal to something, I have y is equal to something, so now I can do parametric. So picking up my calculator, adding another page, graph, menu, 3, this time I'm going down the parametric. My x equation was 6 plus 9 times the cosine. And then keep, this is a t, so make sure you use a t. You might be tempted to use a theta because we wrote theta, but you can't because theta is not there, so you can't do it. And then this one is 3 square roots of 5 times the sine. Oh, no, Mr. We Mr. Polis. No, 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 no. Okay, so then you have all three graphs are the same? Wrestlers, all seasoned football players. Okay. And then you guys know how to save it? Yes? So if I were you, so to the next class we're going to work on this, and I'm going to stop this recording.